I also would like to thank the organizers for uh, bringing us to this uh, beautiful place. And it is also my first conference in uh, two years time. So I'm happy to see everyone again. It's uh, has been a long while. I'm thankful to Jairo for keeping up SPICE. Uh, and now let us look at uh, what we have been doing in the last few years. Uh, actually, we have been developing in Uppsala up initial theory for coherent magnetic switching. So it fits uh, nicely to the topic of the, uh, the workshop. And this work has been done with uh, people in my group or they were previously in my group. And what we have been doing is uh, uh, up initial theory actually for uh, what you can call Rasmus Edelstein effect or also uh, the inverse Faraday effect. Uh, and also we have been working on uh, developing a theory for torques, special torques like field derivative torque, the optical spin orbit torque. Uh, so that is our up initial part where we actually work with uh, relativistic uh, Dirac theory. Uh, but but uh, that is one part. And of course it needs to come into the, the, the real dynamics. Uh, and for that, we work together closely. I have to say with uh, the group of uh, Uli Novak in Constance. Uh, we have had uh, a long-standing collaboration and Uli has the next talk, but it is after the dinner tomorrow. Uh, so um, we also work with uh, the group of Laszlo Sunyok uh, in uh, Budapest and with uh, Karl Sarva in Prague. Uh, and let us go back to the topic of the, uh, the workshop. We want to switch and we want to do this as fast as we can. And then we can think what, what kind of possibilities do we have? Yeah, we can think of coherent switching, incoherent switching. We can have dissipative uh, or, or non-dissipative processes. Uh, so if you go for the, the, the uh, if we think about the incoherent processes, it was already mentioned uh, by Alexei Kimmel and by Tomasz. Basically what we can do is we, we have a material like gadolinium iron cobalt, we hit it with the laser and we, we excite uh, it strongly. Uh, and then there is, uh, there is a switching that happens. You, you can call this uh, destroy and rebuild. You know, you, all, you have a longitudinal magnetization, you almost completely quench, quench it, and from there it has to rebuild again. Uh, the nice thing is, nonetheless, that uh, even if it is uh, an incoherent process, you can achieve uh, toggle switching that was actually shown in this uh, major communications by uh, Tom Ostler et al. Okay, so these, these are uh, incoherent processes. What else do we have? We have, uh, as was also mentioned already today, we have uh, inverse spin galvanic effect or Rasba Edelstein effect was uh, uh, predicted in this very nice uh, PRL by Jakub Selesny. Uh, and then it was applied in the science paper, uh, Watli et al, where several co-authors are in the, in the audience. So they, they showed with uh, current pulses, you could nicely switch and it was, uh, attributed to the uh, the inverse uh, spin hall effect, uh, where you have the stacked spin orbit torques that act on the uh, the different uh, manganese atoms uh, in this uh, uh, system without uh, with uh, symmetry breaking. Um, if we go a little bit back and we go uh, again to the ferry magnets, so we want to understand a little bit more uh, what is going on here. Uh, what, what was very nice paper, also uh, the group of Nijmegen, uh, Alexei Kimmel and uh, Ivi Radu uh, from uh, Berlin, uh, they did this, uh, these measurements with XMCD at Bessi. And then you nicely see that uh, the, the iron demagne demagnetizes very fast. And it is the, the moment disappears, gadolinium is slow. Uh, and then there is this um, transient uh, ferromagnetic state. And then uh, after that, uh, uh, so from this point on, there's a switching starting and then it, it, uh, the system rebuilds. Uh, and what is nice is that it, it is almost demagnetized. If this is a theory by Roy Chantrel, but uh, it uh, almost demagnetizes at one picosecond. And that looks good, but there, there, is, a, there is a big but. Uh, and this is, if you look, how is the rebuilding going on? Uh, because we have an incoherent process and, and we need to rebuild the magnetization. This is a nice paper by, by uh, Luc Adir, uh, where they did XMCD PEAM. And now you see also the long time scale. So what, what you have here, this, the, the initial part is very fast. 
but then the the, the rebuilding actually goes uh, quite slow you know so here we at this here we are at a few nanoseconds and it is still not completely uh, saturated again uh, so the restoring time uh, in this uh, method of switching can be up to a nanosecond and if you then think about uh, uh, devices yeah magnetic memories you want to write you want to rewrite you cannot rewrite within half a nanosecond and that is actually a long time so that is a, a disadvantage of the the incoherent mechanism so now if we want to go to the coherent processes what are the options that we have they have been mentioned basically already today so we had the, the one that was uh, in uh, two slides back at uh, the rush by edelstein effect uh, or inverse pin galvanic effect you can formulate it in this way that you have an induced magnetization there is an uh, applied electric field or you can transform it to a current and then there is the magnetoelectric uh, susceptibility tensor in between it uh, and what you want to do is you want to induce a magnetization with either current or, or electric field uh, and that is good however there is a frequency dependence here uh, so this is a, a, a linear process uh, so you have the same frequency dependence here as here this means that uh, you, you want to use a short current pulse or maybe a terahertz field but you don't want to go to optical pulses because then you will have a, you, your induced magnetization will be uh, changing sign very fast and that is not not um, um, very favorable for uh, switching um, this here this mechanism we have seen it it it, uh, it is there it it, it um, can lead to switching it it requires uh, the symmetry breaking as i already said so it is restricted to a certain subset of uh, antiferromagnetic uh, materials now if you go to the inverse faraday effect uh, the situation is different inverse faraday effect is non-linear optics uh, or non-linear magneto optics and actually i want to present what is now the the fourth uh, uh, version of the inverse faraday effect because we had we had several versions of the inverse Faraday effect. Okay, so what happens is here in the in the nonlinear uh, uh, magneto optics, we have now the the induced magnetization scales with e square. Okay, but there is an important point that even if I have here uh, the frequency dependence in the e field, the induced magnetization is at zero frequency. So I come in with uh, with a laser pulse, and it can be doesn't matter terahertz, uh, petahertz. The induced magnetization is always uh, is always like a, a stable, not fluctuating uh, magnetization, uh, because it is this this second order process. So this means then that if I now want to go to uh, the fast time domain, then this is actually very good because here I can work with uh, femtosecond laser pulses. Yeah, I can have 30 femtoseconds, 50, whatever, but but still the the induced magnetization it is a little bit sketched here. Uh, I have my uh, my laser pulse, but then uh, during the action of the laser pulse, I have my induced magnetization, and it will after the the laser pulse has disappeared, it will decay, but it stays a little bit. Uh, so that is the what we have from the inverse uh, Faraday effect. So we wrote several papers on that, not not Kimmel at all. That was uh, the uh, the first observation of the the action of uh, uh, inverse uh, Faraday effect. Um, yeah, uh, but we did uh, we did uh, develop uh, up initial theory for it. Um, the the uh, nice thing is not only that if you look at the the time dependence so that is very favorable uh, you you don't need uh, symmetry breaking yeah so there is a difference between what is here in the the linear order and the, and the second order here i must have this local symmetry breaking but not here okay so that is nice we uh, we did uh, uh, develop uh, theory for it so this is density matrix theory it is like kubo theory to, uh, driven to second order i can show uh, equations uh, but i wanted to skip that so we calculate this induced magnetization and now we make a next step actually if you look in detail there is a uh, there is an orbital magnetization and there is a spin magnetization that is induced uh, and then we can use our dft formalism relativistic dft to calculate this here is an example so this is palladium and platinum we have sigma plus we have sigma minus so that is the helicity of the light 
and then you see it is uh, anti-symmetric. You know, if I, if I switch the helicity, I would switch the, the magnetization. What you also can see is that the orbital component is actually quite large. You know, so there is an induced orbital magnetization that is large spin magnetization, a bit smaller. Now we can also go to other materials like iron platinum. Uh, and then there is a change that here I have an, an anti-symmetry. Now what happens is if I have a magnetization axis and I come with my light, uh, then there are two possible uh, configurations. You can say it is, it is like parallel or anti-parallel. Uh, and then actually that makes a difference. So now sigma plus and sigma minus, they don't give the same result depending on whether the, the light is parallel or anti-parallel to the magnetization. Okay, but nonetheless, uh, we can uh, calculate that. Uh, and actually, we, we did it also together with uh, Uli Novak and Markus Münzenberg. We looked in, into the switching of uh, iron platinum. Oksana was also on that paper. Oi, that was not it. Let me go back. Ah, sorry. Okay, let us now go to antifair magnets. But before I do that, I should point out the size here. So we, we calculate this, this constant here, and then the I is the intensity. And it is just linear in I, just so we calculate the constant and then the experiment determines what kind of I I have. And it is just a, a multiplication here. Here you see this 0 0.03. And now I have here, uh, I made for an example, I made iron. I made iron BCC antiferromagnetic on the computer. So there is the, the, the BCC iron is pointing in the opposite direction. Now you look here, you see 0. Uh, zero, zero, 003 so it's 10 times smaller uh, it looks as if as if this is not going to be good for antiferromagnets yeah oh, okay sorry um but if you look in detail and you you do the projection of on, on of the ife on the different uh, iron atoms uh, so we can do that in the calculation then actually you see that uh, if you look here it is this is almost uh, 10 times larger so there are there are two contributions on the uh, on the iron atoms in this case for the antiferromagnet. I have uh, uh, what is shown here basically. I have one induced moment on one iron atom with a certain sign uh, and and the uh, length. Uh, on the other iron atom, it is opposite, and they almost cancel. Now they don't. Here is an example here for this uh, uh, for this uh, intensity. So they 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 almost cancel. And that, that makes then that the total effect, if I now look at the whole unit cell, it looks small. Now it looks small, it is anti-symmetric anti in the helicity, but if you look on the individual atoms, it is large. Okay, so that is an important uh, message. Uh, actually, what is also important is that uh, uh, because they are anti-parallel, I get from the inverse Faraday effect, I get staggered uh, moments, staggered anti-ferromagnetic moments. So this is actually, uh, if you want, it is similar to the uh, to the Rasba Edelstein effect. Now we want to go to to real materials. We 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 made the choice. Uh, we want to go for chromium platinum. Chromium platinum has the same crystal structure as uh, iron platinum, uh, but it is an antiferromagnet. It is quite well uh, studied. Uh, Nial temperature seven hundred sixty sixty Kelvin. Uh, magnetization actually is is in the in the uh, AB plane. Um, now, so we can calculate uh, the uh, the inverse Faraday effect. So we do this on the chromium atoms. We do this on the platinum atoms, and, and then you see again the same thing. Yeah. So that actually uh, it uh, the induced magnetization is staggered on the chromium atoms. Uh, it is in on one atom uh, pointing in one direction and the other one in the opposite direction. I can reverse the helicity, and then you see the two interchange. Now that is what you can see in this plot. You can also look then. Uh, I can make a choice. Yeah, look where is approximately uh, a large value that, so we took this 2.26 uh, electron volts, uh, and we have this, uh, this intensity. And then I get my, my induced moments that are staggered. Okay, so that is, that is nice. Um, and uh, now we, together with Uli Novak, and the, let me also tell that is a poster by uh, Tobias Daneger. Um, we started to work on this to, to make a model and look uh, at the switching. Uh, 
So I will not talk about much about the, the spin dynamics model because I think uh, Uli will talk about that tomorrow. And also the poster has it. Uh, so what we do is that we take the Heisenberg Hamiltonian and we in, insert in the Heisenberg Hamiltonian the induced magnetic moments. Uh, and then the atomistic spin dynamics calculations uh, are performed. Uh, and then actually you see something that is uh, very interesting. So this here, this is, this is the laser pulse. Okay, so then we have the, the electron temperature. So the two temperature model is also needed in that. Um, and then we can look at the magnetization here. Uh, so here, uh, and this is uh, the, the antiferromagnetic um, antifer direction now. So what we see here is that uh, if I do not take into account the inverse Faraday effect, I have some dip in the magnetization and then a recovery. However, however, if I take the, uh, the inverse Faraday effect into account, I see uh, a very fast switching. Yeah, if you look here, so the, the switching goes very fast. And uh, here is this is even before 200 femtoseconds. It crosses the zero line and then it sta stabilizes uh, in the opposite direction. Also very fast because uh, at some 500 um, uh, femtoseconds, we, we are back at the initial value. Uh, so that is an interesting uh, prediction at this point. So this is a coherent mechanism. That is what I want to emphasize uh, because we can look at the in influence of heating and that was also done. So uh, this is the absorbed uh, laser intensity. This is the switching probability. Um, only inverse Faraday effect. I need some threshold, and then I have um, a switching, 100% uh, switching probability. Now heating. Uh, if I have this, uh, this the, the blue symbol EFE plus heat. Heating actually it helps a, a bit uh, in this first part. So the the heating assists the switching here. However, then if I have too much uh, laser intensity, I start to demagnetize. And that is not what we want. And now actually the switching probability is, is going down here again. Uh, if there is no inverse Faraday effect, then I can also have some, some switching probability, but it is, it is like not even here 50-50, but it is just the, 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 the demagnetiz demagnetization and remagnetizing and that is then uh, just a probabilistic uh, process. Uh, so uh, what this tells us that uh, with the inverse Faraday effect, uh, we have these staggered moments and they can lead to a very fast non-thermal uh, switching. Uh, and one can also understand uh, where it comes from. Yeah, there, are, there are two torques that uh, come in, into the game, uh, but basically this is uh, what was already mentioned that we have the the uh, exchange, uh, antiferromagnetic exchange enhanced switching when uh, one torque tries to push the, the moments uh, from the antiparallel alignment and the other one uh, switches them around uh, on an, uh, on an um, elliptic uh, uh, um, um, uh, scale, no, elliptic um, uh, ring. Okay, so this was, uh, this was for chromium platinum. Um, now you can also, so chromium platinum is, is a nice antiferromagnet. Uh, you can try to come back to ferrimagnets that I was mentioning in the beginning. So if I have the ferrimagnets, gadolinium, iron, cobalt, I need certain amount of gadolinium, certain amount of iron. Uh, and uh, okay, so that the, the moments are approximately compensating each other, uh, but the gadolinium moment is, is larger than the iron moment. Now what I can do, uh, but it was done in the spin dynamics simulations, uh, I can change the, the length of the, the two moments. So I can make one chromium four times larger just to, to simulate what would I get if I have something like uh, gadolinium iron uh, cobalt. And what you see then, if you make this, uh, this the, the, the difference uh, of the two lengths of the moments, you actually, you, you go, this is what you get for the antiferromagnet. So this is a very high uh, probability to have uh, deterministic uh, switching. Uh, but if you go into the, the ferromagnet, ferrimagnet here, with different lengths, actually it, it becomes just stochastic uh, uh, switching similar to uh, uh, the heating. Okay, so uh, Uli will tell more about that tomorrow. Um, 
we were also looking at manganese to gold. So manganese to gold has been mentioned everything already. So we have this uh, broken uh, uh, symmetry, inversion symmetry. Uh, we, we were interested in, in taking this one, not, not the co uh, copper manganese arsenide. Uh, and the group from Mainz here, both Naratal, they did uh, switching experiments. So what you see here is you need uh, quite a number of, of pulses, uh, but then if you apply enough pulses, you, you can get uh, a switching. Uh, so we wanted to look what we can do here for uh, uh, using app initial theory and then also uh, uh, combined with uh, atomistic spin dynamic simulations. So what we do is now we use linear response. Yeah, so we, do, we don't do the second order response, but we, we use linear response. Um, so we calculate this, uh, uh, this tensor chi, and then we have the, the induced magnetization uh, depending on uh, the electric field. Um, so when you do this, it, it turns out that it is, is quite uh, intricate. Uh, because uh, if I look now and I, I do a, um, a separation, uh, I, I, I separate again this magnetization here in the orbital part and in the spin part, just as we were doing it for the inverse Faraday effect. And then I see that uh, if I want to, so we call this orbital Edelstein effect for the, the, the manganese one and manganese two. Here, uh, I get uh, almost perfect uh, staggered uh, uh, symmetry. Uh, or also called uh, Rasbar, Rasbar type. Uh, however, if you go to the, the spin part, uh, it, is, it is different. So we, our calculation uh, shows that it is not completely staggered. Uh, this is different from what, what Jakob uh, got. So, so we have um, uh, our calculations tell that there is actually also an, a non-staggered uh, component. Um, and then it, it means then that although there is, if you look in a certain direction, yeah, you, the, the E field is like this, and then you see the, the, the red and black arrow. So the, they are pointing, in, in this case, they are pointing in different directions for the two manganese atoms, but, but that is not always the case. Okay, so that, uh, it depends on uh, the direction of the E field. So that is what we got. So this is perfectly, um, if you go around actually, yeah, okay. So th this is, um, uh, perfectly in plane, uh, but here there is also an, an out of plane component that comes in. Uh, but moreover, uh, so this is the orbital part. So here, if you look at the numbers, uh, 10 minus three and here 10 minus five. So the, the, the orbital uh, contribution is uh, much larger. Uh, that is what our calculations in, in this paper uh, say. Um, now, so we, we teamed up with uh, uh, Uli Novak and his group, and now, so this is the, the Hamiltonian uh, that I did not show for the, uh, for the chromium platinum, but it is similar. So what we do is that uh, we calculate, we try to calculate as many components in this Hamiltonian ab initio. So we calculate those exchange constants ab initio. The small si is the induced magnetization uh, that is here, and then we have also a kind of uh, SD coupling, uh, and then we have the induced uh, orbital um, uh, magnetic moment, and these these are the calculated uh, uh, anisotropy constants. So um, uh, basically, almost everything is up initial. But what we have to say is that, of course, we, we do a mapping from what is our up initial calculation onto to a spin model which is then actually now it, it becomes a, a classical spin model, but this can then be treated with uh, spin dynamic simulations. It was published, oh no, it is published, it is uh, in, in print. Uh, and here actually, if you put uh, the, the E fields in certain directions, you can nicely see the switching. So that is, it, it, this is consistent. We have here uh, a, a 20 picosecond uh, electric pulse, and you see nicely, you see here, uh, the, the switching uh, from uh, <clears throat> from from one vector uh, over 90 degrees. Uh, if you look at the numbers, now we can go into because we have the initial calculation, so we can go, go into details of the numbers. The E field is that we had here is normally larger than what, what is in the experiment. Okay, so. Um, um, but what, what is nonetheless what is nice? It, 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 there is a switching in, in some four picoseconds here. Um, 
and this 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 we could, this could also be understood but it is actually it was in, in first mentioned in, in the paper by uh, Jörg Munderich the uh, again the exchanged enhanced uh, switching um, if you go to more realistic numbers anyhow what is uh, what I want to say here is that uh, uh, because we have these numbers I would say um, it is uh, quite clear that uh, that actually here you need a certain to come over a thermal threshold uh, and then you can uh, achieve uh, the switching in manganese uh, to gold uh, actually a little bit depending then on what is the uh, uh, the direction of the e field uh, but here you need uh, some some at least 200 uh, uh, kelvin okay so let me go to the end if that is possible maybe it's also mm -hmm. okay yeah so uh, i want to close soon uh, so uh, so we saw the the inverse faraday effect and and the uh, rasper edelstein effect are there other ways uh, for having uh, coherent torques. So if you just think about uh, landau lipschitz uh, gilbert equation and we add uh, a torque, so what kind of options would we have? Uh, so we could think about what is now kind of popular torque, the inertial torque uh, observed in this paper, uh, Nature Physics, uh, where I have uh, this form of the torque. Yeah? The important quantity is this capital I here, uh, that is the um, kind of measure of the inertia, um, and it is it is an, um, a materials uh, dependent property. Uh, the, this I here, if you look how it scales, it is it actually it corresponds to a rather short uh, time, so it is uh, less than a picosecond, uh, and that might be good for uh, for ultra fast uh, switching. However, as I said, it, this capital I is intrinsic. Uh, and we, we don't know what is the way to, to change it. So it is just the materials property, it is there. Whether it is good or not, it, it will depend on the, on the material. Uh, and then we can also think about other torques we have been looking at. So there is uh, uh, beyond what uh, Santita was saying, there are actually uh, terms uh, in the Dirac Hamiltonian uh, where the, the magnetization couples directly to the, the spin angular momentum of the, the light. So that is another torque, which is a, an optical spin orbit torque. Uh, it, might, uh, it might work. There are some uh, observations uh, maybe in the, in the literature, uh, but, but, but switching itself has, uh, has not been uh, seen uh, by this. Uh, and, the, and the last uh, one that one could think of, at least I could think of, uh, is, is called the, the field derivative torque. It's uh, a bit an unusual torque, uh, but you see this torque when you have a, a, a B field, uh, the, the magnetic field that is changing very fast. So you have, a, for instance, a, a terahertz field. And then this term comes in into the landau lipschitz gilbert equation. Um, it might play a role so far it has not been seen actually it has there's no experimental observation uh, from the of the field derivative torque but it it would uh, lead to a, a different um, um, uh, procession and maybe also switching uh, behavior the advantage is here that this one is non-relativistic uh, but the other two at least in our derivation that for on, on the pre these two they are relativistic <coughs> torques so uh, let me uh, end with saying that uh, uh, there, there is more in the inverse Faraday effect than we thought, at least in, in the way that we look upon the inverse Faraday effect. It gives staggered, uh, it can give staggered torques. Uh, it can give also uh, fast switching as the, uh, uh, the simulations for chromium platinum showed. Um, so there is certainly more to be learned about uh, the inverse Faraday effect. Uh, and other simulations uh, that we had showed that uh, uh, manganese to gold, it, it, it works to, to switch, but still also there are more things uh, to be understood. Uh, what is the, uh, the effect of heating and what is the effect of the non-staggered uh, torque? So other possibilities, I have them, mentioned them. 
uh, they will come maybe in the future. Okay, thank you very much.